Welcome geometry students to West Explains Best. Today we're doing segments, angles, and angle pairs. Oh my, section 1.3. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here we have the segment addition postulate. What does that mean? Well, let's break it down into this little diagram here. We have this uh, line segment. It's a line segment because it has endpoints A and it has an endpoint B, or sorry, C, and it's got another point B in the middle. Now, as you can see here, we can really break this down into a couple different segments. We have this shorter segment here, AB. We have another longer segment here, BC, but it's still not the longest one. And then we have the longest segment, AC. And that was a fail of a straight line. Let me try that again. Okay, we have the longest segment here, AC, okay? Now, the segment addition postulate is fairly simple. It just says that this green segment, the long segment, is the sum of the smaller segments that are within it. So we can write here that AB, segment AB, and I'm gonna write a little bar over AB. I know I'm not using the same colors as like the blue and the purple, okay? But just wanna give you an idea. So we have AB, and then we have, what color should I use here? I'll use blue. Then we have BC, and that is gonna be equal, and I'll make this my green one equal to AC. And that's the segment addition postulate. Pretty simple. It's just the, the sum of two smaller segments make up the bigger segment. Okay, so that's your 411 on the segment addition postulate. Now we have midpoints and segment bisectors. This is uh, an extension of kind of what we just learned. Um, a little bit different, a uh, midpoint. So when we're talking about midpoint, we're talking about the middle of a line segment, the middle of a line, okay? Now, what that means literally is that the segment is split into two equal parts. So a midpoint splits a segment into two equal parts. Two equal parts. Equal parts. Okay. Um, and it's the point which it does that. So it's a point. Okay, that's the key there, that is a point. So here we have, this is the midpoint. And I know it's a midpoint because it divides uh, the whole segment AC into two smaller segments, BC and AB. And how do I know that they're the same? That's what these lines are for. So these lines tell you that those two segments have the same length. So because this has two little dashes, the other one has two little dashes, they're the same length. If this one had, for example, if this segment had one little dash and this one had one, they would be the same. But if this one has three and that one has one, these two are not the same, okay? So this give you an idea of where those dashes come from. Now, segment bisector, what does that mean? Well, segment is a line segment, okay? So it's a line and bisector. Bi means two, sector means split. So split in two. This is the bisect segment bisector is the line that's doing the splitting, bisecting a segment. So this is the segment bisector. Segment bisector. It's the one doing the splitting. So midpoint is the location. Okay, so think, uh, let me just go this um, back to the screen. Okay, so think of this as the location. And then think of the segment bisector as the guy doing the splitting, okay? All right, now let's look at our first example. What fun. So here we have a segment and it's uh, PR is the big segment and it has Q and it, we're given that this is a midpoint. And I'm guessing we're supposed to find X. So how do we do that? Well, this is a midpoint and it truly is a midpoint. Then these two segments are gonna be congruent. They're gonna be of equal length. And if they're of equal length, that means we can set, well, let's write out our little formula here. We know that PQ is gonna be equal to QR, okay? Because they, they're, by definition of a midpoint, they need to be equal length. Now we can substitute the value of those segments in for PQ and QR. So we have six X minus seven, and we're gonna set that equal to five X plus one. See how I just substitute that value in? Okay, next up, I think the best thing to do in this situation is to subtract the smaller variable from both sides. You wanna combine your variables first. So I subtract 5x from both sides. 
I get x minus 7 equals 1. And now I need to add 7 to get the x by itself. That's supposed to be a 1, not an i. And I get x equals 8. Now, a lot of times these questions not only will ask you for the variable, but they'll ask you for the length. So really, we just need to plug this into one of them if this is what the question was asking. Uh, because they're the same length, that you know they're going to be the same. So I plug 8 in for x, I get 5 times 8 plus 1. That's 41. So PQ is 41, QR is 41, and PR, the big guy, is going to be 82. Moving on. Angles. These things are pretty cool. No, they're not angels. They're angles. The L makes a big difference. Now, what are an what what would you find at angle as? Well, the sides are rays. Okay, so that's the first clue. Sides are rays. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a an endpoint. In this case, it's A, and then for this bottom ray, it goes through C and it goes off to infinity, no beyond. Okay, and then we have AC. That's the ray there, and it's very important how I write this. So I'm actually going to Color is going to be important here. I'm going to change the colors. I'm going to go off this palette only. So I have A, dang it, it's supposed to be blue, A, C, and now the arrow needs to go this way. It cannot go the other way because this, the segment, the ray starts on the end point, which is A, and it goes through C, and the other ray starts on A, and it goes through B. Okay, I cannot have it uh, where C is first or B is first. Is that blue? Yes, it is. B. It goes this way. Okay, so it can't be like B, A. This is just plain old wrong. You can't do that because the segment does not begin at A. Now, A has a special name. This thing uh, of an angle is called a vertex. Okay, that's where it kind of hinges and it comes to an endpoint. Okay, so uh, when we're talking about angles, there's one other thing to continue, uh, consider is you have an interior of an angle. Okay, the inside, this is the one that's typically measured, but we also can keep in mind that there's an exterior of an angle also. So this is the exterior, and it can also have a measure, measure, pardon me. Okay, so let's get into naming them now. So how do you name angles? Well, there's a couple different ways, three to be exact. You can name it by the vertex. So you can name it by the vertex. So in this case, we could call it angle and that's the angle symbol isn't that pretty cool angle a so we name it by the vertex another way we can do it is we can name it by using three letters so we can call it b a c or we can go the other way c a b what do you notice about both of these both of these have the vertex in the middle so we have the vertex in the middle for both. That's very important. When you're using three letters, the vertex has, has to be in the middle, but it doesn't matter which order you go in. You have to go around, and A has to be the middle. And the last one is to use a number. So if there's an angle that's numbered, you can use the number, use the number. So in this case, it would be angle one. Okay, and it's not, it's not very common that angles are measured like that, but um, it's just something to consider. Example two, name as many angles as possible. So we can have Frank, Patricia, Stan, I'm just kidding. Okay, so we have a bunch of different options here. We could call one angle one, we could go angle two, we could go angle J, M, that's the vertex, K, angle L, M, that's the vertex, K, we could go angle K, M, L, I mean, there's so many different possibilities. We could go angle J, M, L, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing you probably want to avoid, angle M, okay, why? What's wrong with this? Well, which angle are we talking about? Are we talking about JMK? Are we talking about KML? Are we talking about uh, JML? There's too many possibilities here. So that's why when you have a situation like this, it's best to use three letters and be very specific. You can never go wrong with this one. This is the most effective way to call angles because it's the most specific. And these ones, this one's not bad too, the bottom one, but uh, three letters is probably like the best go-to. Angle types. I know we shouldn't be judging people and, and breaking them down into their types, etc. but there are different types of angles here. This one is called acute, okay? 
and this is an acute angle and this is when x is less than 90 degrees 90 degrees is kind of like the one of the main metrics as you can see here it's very useful okay so this is x equals 90 degrees and this is our guy this is the right angle okay no such thing as a wrong angle just remember that this one is obtuse so obtuse is anytime x is bigger than 90. i'm going to say x is bigger than one oops sorry than 90 degrees okay so obtuse is bigger than 90 degrees and then we have the last one this is called a straight angle also known as a line so a line essentially has a measure of 180 degrees this is a straight angle okay uh, we're actually almost done can you believe that we just cruise right through we have the angle addition postulate this essentially means a smaller angle uh, added together with another angle uh, uh, joined to it through a side and connected to the vertex composes uh, the bigger angle. So one thing we'll notice here, I know that I just said a lot, we have a shared vertex, shared vertex, we have a shared side, I'll make a dotted line there, dotted line. This is a shared side, okay? So I can say here that angle one or sorry, there's no angle measure. We'll call it angle C, O, B. And then we'll add this to angle B, O, A, BOA. And this is gonna be equal to our big angle, C, O, A, angle C, O, A. And I forgot the angle. It's actually pretty important that you call this angle uh, B, O, A. Let me just make some room here. Otherwise, it could be a plane. You never know what that could be. So this is essentially the segment addition postulate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> angle addition po postulate. Same principle, uh, just applied to angles. Okay, now, this uh, this is kind of the, the toughest problem we have. This is example three. And it's saying that RQT, that's our big angle. Okay, our big angle is measured 155. We need to find the two smaller angles, SQT, that's, uh, let me change the color here. That's this guy. Okay, and we also need to find RQS. Whoops, you guys get what I mean. The SQR and RQS, so S, SQT, sorry. SQT will make orange, and then green we will make RQS. Okay, what do we do? Well, we need to set up a situation first. We're gonna use the segment addition postulate. And the first thing we know is we can add angle RQS plus angle SQT, and it's gonna be equal to our big angle, angle RQT. Setting it up is always the first step. You're gonna set up based on the principles that you've learned, okay? So we have that going on now. What are we gonna do next? Well, we're gonna plug in our values. So we have 4x minus 20, 4x minus 20, plus, and put this in parentheses, SQT, 3x plus 14. And the reason why I put it in parentheses is anytime you have minus signs or addition signs, you just gotta be a little careful. Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to my main guy, 155. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I, I essentially can get rid of the parentheses because it's a plus sign, it's not a minus sign outside the parentheses. So I'm gonna say, okay, 4x plus, I'm gonna combine my like terms. Well, I'm gonna erase my parentheses first, as I said. And now I'm gonna combine my like terms, 4x, 3x, okay, negative 20, positive 14. Those are my like terms. So I'm gonna start with 4x, 3x, I get 7x, and then I get plus, no, minus, sorry, minus six, and this is gonna be equal to 155. I apologize for the handwriting, 155. Okay, so I need to add six here. I wanna add six, I get one, seven X equals uh, 150, no, what are those, what's that, 161. Okay, I'm actually gonna need a calculator here. So let me grab a calculator real quick. So I have 161, 155 plus six, right? Yeah, that's it. So I have 150, 161 divided by seven, oops, 
one six one divided by clear again one six one divided by seven. Okay, so I get x equals twenty three. Okay, but that's not the answer. Do not stop there. We still need to find RQS, that the angle measure, and SQT. So what I need to do here is I need to plug x equals 23 into both of these. x equals 23. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, 4x minus 20. I'm going to say instead 4 times 23 minus 20, and that's going to be my answer for RQS. So I do 4 times 23, 4, 4 times 23, and then I'm minus 20, and I get 72. So this is 72 degrees. No, that's RQS, dang it. I've been getting those mixed up all day. 72. Then I have 23 times 3, that, sorry, I should write it out. my apologies. Uh, 3 times 23, I don't know why I put that in parentheses. 3 times 23 plus 14, should have just moved up. Okay, 3 times 23, that's going to give me 69, no, yes, yeah, 69 plus 14. So that gives me 73, 83. Do 83 plus 72 equal 5? They sure do. So there's our final answer. And that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time on West Explains Best.